Hello there my YouTube chums. It's been a while but today I'm talking about how I put in a compact flash card into my 486 all-in-one compact Rosario. Probably the last upgrade I'm going to do on this machine. I've been waiting to do it for an awful long time. Um, had to get a few parts to get it working because it was a bit cramped inside there. So I'm just going to show you what I did, um, what software I, software I used to get the 4 gigabyte compact flash working and uh, just show you how it goes. So as you can see here, I've got one of these compact flash bracket adapters. I bought this a, a long time ago, I've just never used it. But because the case is so cramped, I've had to buy these extenders. So it's like these uh, Y splitters plus an extra extender there that I've used to get a little bit extra length on the power. Because you need to put that floppy power cable in to kind of power the uh, CF card. So I route it underneath there and bring it around. Now the other thing was, you can see that the hard drive there is, is really tucked in on the right. And there's a very small little IDE kind of connector there. So I've had to put in a much longer cable to route all the way around to where the bracket's going to be. Now the big thing for me was I, I did try a, a standard 40 pin cable. Maybe I had it the wrong way around, but I don't think so. But with the 40 pin cable, what happened was the BIOS picked up the CF card, but I couldn't actually install DOS. It was only once I swapped out for this cable that everything went okay. So that's where I've got to plug it in. So I've got to pop it right down in that bottom hole and then route it around the top. Now it's a bit of a tight fit once you slide this back in. So I'm trying to keep that cable to the top end just so that I can slide the whole case and motherboard back in. But there you go. That's all my extenders in. So that's connected up the CF card. I've kept the hard drive in there just in case I need to use it again in the future. But that's it, that's all I needed to do in here. And you just slide it back in. Put in a couple of the screws. And then we're ready to go. Now I did have to put a whole bunch of software on. And uh, firstly, I needed this uh, dynamic drive overlay. Now the BIOS picked up the CF card straight away, but what this software does is then it breaks up that four gig card into two two gig partitions. And then from there, what happens is it asks you for uh, the MS-DOS kind of installer files so that you can set up the card to be bootable. And then I also needed to install uh, really the mouse the mouse drivers here, which I got from Phil's Computer Lab. In fact, I got the easy um, Western Digital stuff from Phil's Computer Lab as well. Once I had DOS 6.2 working uh, with my mouse, installed Windows 3.1, got all the disks there. And the reason for that is because I've got an ES uh, audio drive card in here and I got the drivers there, which install really easily through Windows 3.1. And then I always installed Wolf uh, 3D because uh, I always test the mouse and the sound. Now this was the other thing that I did buy, uh, just one of these simple cheap uh, CF card readers, so I can plug it into my Windows 10 machine and copy software over. One thing I do notice is that it always picks up the C partition, it always has some weird error on the D drive. But I did try formatting it and that screwed it all up and I had to start again. So uh, if you see that happening, don't mess around with it. The computer does detect it fine. Here we go here, we're loading up. And it is pretty rapid with the CF card, obviously. I put all my games, DOS games, over into a games folder on the C drive. I don't really have anything on the D drive at the moment. But you can see this is running pretty good. In fact, uh, I used to have quite a bit of juddery stutters on this, and that was when the game was uh, accessing the hard drive for sound. So with the CF card, it's much quicker. Here's a few more games just loading up. 
He's a transport tycoon, runs very nicely, especially since I put in that DX4 overdrive chip. It's a very cool game, this one. I can lose a lot of hours to this, but I uh, quickly quit out of there. And here's Windows 3.1. Mostly just so you go into the file system. Don't really use Windows that much on here, but it it's a bit easier for moving files around, especially between the two drives. Uh, historically, when I was growing up, I used to use DOS Shell quite a lot, so I've got a weird nostalgia for DOS Shell. But here you go, I'm going to go into my little games folder, pick up one with, uh, with the PC sounds. Now some of these games, I must admit, I have got from Abandonware sites because it's easier then just to get the files. But I do have most of these in uh, big box format anyway. Now that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please leave a like or consider subscribing. If you've got any questions about what I did or which parts I used or anything really, just put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, keep safe everybody and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.